Stories bring lessons, laughter, unforgettable experiences, and memories that far outlive the storytellers themselves. Great stories happen to those who can tell them. This is the Jack and Around podcast, hosted by two-time Academy of Country Music Award winner and master storyteller Jack Ingram. In these open dialogue podcasts, Jack digs into the personal stories of a wide variety of special guests, including your favorite music, sports, and entertainment personalities. And now to introduce today's guest, here is podcast producer Matt Pivato. Thank you, Mr. Roddy Yates. Welcome to the first part of a two-part podcast series of episode three featuring four-time world champion bull rider and pro rodeo and bull riding hall of fame inductee, Tuff Hedeman. Over the next hour and a half, Tuff visits with two-time ACM award winner and host Jack Ingram about his childhood, college days at Sol Ross. He also touches on his bull riding mentors and friendships he formed during his professional rodeo career, including the close friendship with legendary bull rider in the late great Lane Frost. Part two premieres next Thursday, February 18th. During that part, Tuff elaborates on his career, including a bull that was so feared and dangerous they had to retire him, Bodacious. Tuff also takes a very personal dive into his relationship with Lane Frost, including the movie Eight Seconds, plus his retirement and a bunch more. Tuff is a gentleman and a scholar, huge music fan, and we can't thank him enough for the time he took to visit uh, with us, especially Jack, about his professional and personal life. So real quick, provided in the description and at jackandaroundpodcast.com is Tuff and Jack's bios, links to connect and watch short video clips on social media, including a link to subscribe and watch this full podcast on YouTube, plus others. Last but not least, if you enjoy this podcast, please let us know by liking, sharing, subscribing, and give us a huge five-star review. Here's part one of a two-part podcast series of episode three. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jacking Around Podcast. Wait a minute. I'm um, jacking Around? Did you, did you come up with that yourself? Well, it's not called Jacking Off. That's why I didn't, that's why I would never name my kid Jack. What's your middle name? Me Off? Yeah. Hey, so we're here with this guy. He's a four-time world champion bull rider from 1986, 80. What what were the years? They were they were very soft years. I will just preface. They were what? Soft. Bullshit. Somebody had to win. 86, nope. 89, 91, 95. 95. His name's Tough Hedeman. Richard. Neil. Neil Hedeman, a.k.a. Tough. Yes, sir. Let's start this thing off right. Because I think, man, the first time you told me this story, I, would, I had always respected you and knew exactly who you were. But um, I think one time we were we were doing something together at the Fort Worth in the stockyards at the Hall of Fame. And I asked you how you got the name Tough. And I've told it a thousand times, but how'd you get the name Tough? Uh, I was the youngest of seven, and uh, one of my father's best friend used to take me around with him because when you're the youngest of seven, they say, yeah, just go with him, you know. And we went out to get in his truck, and door, I got in. I went to reach to shut it, and he slammed it and slammed my whole hand in it. And then he walked around got in. I'm like, that hurts, and. He looked over and he saw and he said, oh my gosh. And he gets up and runs around, opens the door. And so there's all these creases and he said, are you okay? And I just shook my head. Yes. And are you going to cry? And I shook my head. No. He said, well, you're a tough nut. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't say anything. And so he started calling me tough nut is a nickname. And everybody started calling me that. And Gosh, he should have called me stupid because I should have just screamed or did something because I didn't say anything. And it's an awful name because growing up, everybody would always want to harass you or make fun of you because you well, think we, you're tough. You don't, you don't look so tough to me. I'll show <laughs> you what tough is. And so you had two choices. You could either you, you could you either had to fight or walk away. And if you walk away then the others would see that you would walk away. So then, then they would chime in and I wasn't all that good at walking away. 
Yeah, man. I heard so you, 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 heard you, you say earlier to. that it was kind of like being named Sue. It's exactly like being a boy named <laughs> Sue. It's like, don't don't harass me because of my name. You don't even know who I am or what I'm about. After you meet me, trust me, I'll give you a lot of reasons. But just by the name itself, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. As a kid. As a kid. It's hard, it's hard to grow up just being a kid without somebody making fun of you because of your name who know nothing about you. It's awful. That's funny you say that. I man. was I was in college. I went to college before where, where? I would ever tell anyone my name was tough. My name was Richard Neal. Okay, so Richard. Okay. Well, Even Richard's Dick, a little tough because it's Dick. Dick. It's a, so yeah. <laughs> You don't want to go. You don't want. You don't want to go by a Richard either way. You go. That's, man. That sucks. So my middle name was Neil, and I was named after a a, a friend of my father's. He was a, one of the smartest guys I've ever met. He was a veterinarian and just a very smart, well respected guy. And so I like Neil. So like I tried to go by Neil. I tried to go by Rick. I tried to go anything but Richard or Tuff. And you know. Your name's your name. It's I always ask people, did, did, did you get to choose your name? No. Did you get to choose your name? No. Nobody gets to choose their name. And like, so I'm all, when I had, when I had kids, I was always very aware of like, I'm not, I'm not going to do that to them. <laughs> That's funny you say that, Because it's just, it's a, it's a shitty way to grow up. <laughs> it just is. Well, it's funny you say that because like when you say, my name is Jack, and it's like, what is it? What is it, Jack me off? It's the same. Yeah, it's the same thing. You know, my uh, my oldest, you know, my oldest son, and you know, my middle son, you know, their grandfather's name is Jack. A wonderful man. And you know, when you have when you have a, when you have a kid, you know, what what about the names? You know, my dad, your dad, or this or that. And, you know, her her dad was her dad was brought up. And I said. Love your dad. Can't Good do guy. it. <laughs> Can't do our it. Son, our son will not be named Jack. I just won't do that to him. It's funny though. Hold on. That's it's funny you say that because being named tough is is way and man the way you grew up is very different than the how I grew up. Like I was I didn't grow up in the rodeo culture, which coming to find out after being an adult and knowing you, that can be pretty tough. That's like living in a football locker room. 24 seven as far as the testosterone and the the let's go you ready to go let's go mentality that you grew up with but being named tough being named like i do remember thinking when they were when when kids when one kid got a good good lick in on my name jack and another kid jumped in another kid jumped in and, it, and all of a sudden it's like real funny to make fun of me i was like which fight do I take here? Well, it's always funny until it's you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's hilarious. Uh, but we had to learn, like, okay, man, I'll, yeah. I got to be badass at this other thing. I got to be badass. Like, I have to, I'm sure, the, I mean, it might not all come down to your name. I'm sure it doesn't. No, it, it, it never but does. But there but are just, things that, like, you had to be a badass. Well, you just had to, you, you just had to fight. You had to fight for, for who you were, you know, it's just, to me, it's very unnecessary, you know, and kids are mean, you know, they're just mean, you know? Yes. And so. Thing of the herd. Well, yeah. So, in some you respects. know, and, and to me, it helped me when I became a father is that, you know, one of the things I always taught my kids, if I ever catch you being one of those guys that picked on somebody because of what they looked like or what their name was. It was not going to end well. You're out. It was not going to end well. Yeah, and to that's this, not what to we this, do. To the, no, no, not not only no, but hell no, because I was important. Because I grew up, and you know, I had great parents and a great family. But you know, when you walk out on your own, and you're by yourself, and you're surrounded by kids your own age, and they start screwing with you because you have a dumb name, it's hard to grow up. Just it's never easy, but don't make it just harder than it already is. It's funny though. That one of my buddies, when I was a new, not a new father, but a couple of years into being a father, and I was kind of bitching about my kid about like, well, he doesn't do this, doesn't do this, whatever. I was worried, and he goes, 
He goes, hey, man, the thing that you think is is their worst attribute will be the thing that propels them forward. And so, like, honestly, so now being named tough and having the the legacy that you have, it all makes sense, dude. Like, I know you don't like the childhood part I, of it, but I, I, you, know, you know what? You do understand that, right? I, I take it with a grain of salt. All I know is that, you know, I've... I'm one of the luckiest guys I've ever known. I just am because I was fortunate enough to have a great family, great parents who gave me the opportunity. Uh, my father is not. My mother just turned 92 Monday, and she told me that I was getting fat and I needed to maybe go run down <laughs> the, the road with my dog, get a lecture. I'll I go was, run away with I you. I was fat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had great parents and... You know, great, Do great they family. In El Paso or are they in Fort Worth? Uh, my mother lives four miles north of me. You know, uh, whenever I moved, I've been just north of Stephenville, you know, since 95. And uh took me about 10 years to drag her down here because, you know, she's born and raised in New Mexico. And Where? she lives just north of me about four miles. Where in New Mexico was she born? Well, her, her parents had a ranch in northeastern New Mexico up up around uh like between Raton, Cimarron, actually just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so she's a New Mexico girl. You know, she used to, you know, her her dad had was a she ranch. A rodeo? No, but her dad was a was a rancher. He he had a store. When she was fifteen, she was driving a a, a fuel tanker through Red River Pass. You know, they they did stuff that, you know, they were like a much more, you know, resilient tougher generation you know things that they did you know you'd be, you, you'd, be you'd, go, you'd, you'd go to jail yeah, it'd be illegal <laughs> you know for child abuse you know yeah, yeah go take that truck and go get some fuel from red river and so Makes when she was 15 i've got a picture of her she's sitting on the back of a gas truck smoking a cigarette <laughs> so yeah that's so that's that you know that's that's who she was but you know they, so how did she make it to El Paso? How that? Well, my, my my dad he grew up around horse racing and and uh, he just worked various jobs. You know he he worked in the racing office. He you know he's a guy that you know. Yeah, what was it called? Sunland Park. Sunland Park. You know we we I think we we've played there before. We lived in uh, El Paso in the winter. Sunland Park, New Mexico, which is just you know it's it's a border town. You can. Take one step and go to Mexico. You can take one step and go to New Mexico. So mm -hmm. that's where I was born, and we'd be there in the winter, and then we would go in the summer. We, till I was like seven or eight, we'd go to Raton, and then when I was eight, we'd go to Rio Doso, and that's what I did until I went to college. And but the so, coolest thing about them is they gave me the, you know, they they gave me the freedom to do what I want to do and support me, and they they taught me. You know, to be independent, to be responsible, and you know, it's on you. So your dad was in that world, but he wasn't. But he wasn't a bull rider. Oh no, no. So how'd you get mm -hmm. into that? I started riding small calves when I was four years old. Right? How? Why? Like did he just? Well, did they, they want they, to or they, they uh, a group of people around the track, you know, a bunch of the 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 the, the fathers and whatnot. They built this arena and they uh, and created a club. They called it the Upper Valley Rodeo Club. And so a bunch of us from around the track and on the west side of El Paso it was a place for us to go and, you know, do that. And I was four years old and I got on a calf and that was my first experience. And it was the coolest thing ever because it initially just – terrifies you but it's 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 a rush of adrenaline that you can't explain it's the same feeling i had when i was four than the last time i rode when i was 35 mm -hmm. the only thing i can really liken it to is i got to fly an f-16 with the thunderbirds one time they had the stick and they put me in a pattern i got to do some loops they had I, the stick i had the stick you had the stick for 15 minutes i mean we flew for 45 minutes and but you got to I actually, control. I actually, I actually flew it for about 15 minutes. And so it's a feeling that it's the absolute most cool thing I've ever done in my life. And 
if I could do it right now, I would go. Is that what it's like being in the being in the middle of that? Well, really, just it's what is it? It's, it's just it's uh, middle, something about like I don't, I'm not. But when you're in it, you get in the middle of that thing, and and you're not really feeling the movement, right? Well, it, you know what 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 bull riding is is it's a it's kind of a trained reaction. It's a it doesn't matter. It's like any other sport, you know, whether it's you know throwing a baseball, swinging a golf club. It's the people that are really good at it. it they have certain there are certain fundamentals that you just have to do, you know. If you're gonna be a great guitar player, this is what you do, and this is how you do it. And, and once you get inside, you, of you, it. You, you, everybody has their own interpretation of it and how they how they do it. But if you look at it, you break it down to the very basics. This this is the things that all of the good guys do. In that, in fun? some, There's in, always three in, or four in, basic in, things in some way, shape, or form. So you can complicate it or you can simplify it. And the only way you can get really good at it is that. Number one, you love it and you have a passion for it, but you have to do it a lot. Mm -hmm. You have to, you have to ride a lot. Is riding bulls like being a great baseball hitter? It's or like it's like anything. Like, like it's it's really repetitions. Yes, it's the only way you learn how to do it is by doing it. You can ride a, you can ride a mechanical bull. You can watch video. You can go to the gym and you can be in great shape, but. What it really comes down to is riding. And riding so the only, bull. the only way you learn how to ride is by riding. And so it's repetition and it's effort. It's desire. It's, do you really want to do this? And a lot of guys like everything about bull riding except bull riding. <laughs> except actually. They like the cool shit, you know. Yeah, they, they, like to, they like to show up and the cute blonde is giving them the look or, you know. But you really have to just love love to ride, and you have to love that challenge. And from the time I was four till I was, you know, you know, came up through junior and high school rodeos. High. Uh, so were you ride in middle school, like going out on weekends, and like yeah. the kids play soccer these days. You yeah, go, yeah. You, you go, go to, to you go to junior rodeos. You know, the the bigger you get, your the dad bigger was the all in, Your mom and dad were. Well, my mom was always there. My dad was did nothing but work. I mean, so your mom was I'm, spearheading I'm, this. I'm movie. the youngest of seven. Okay, so. When you're the when you're the father of the of, of seven, you go to work yeah. all day every day. That's what you do, or that's what we did. And so, yeah, my mom what would take do? us up and down. He just worked all kinds of, you know, jobs. Any anything related to horse racing and the track, he he, he did it, all of the it. track. And so, yeah, when you go to junior high school, and you know, I sucked from the time I was four till the time I was twelve. And but were you better than the other four year olds? No, no, I was, no, I was, I was, I was the worst of all of us, you know. But so when I still, you were in I still like you were losing. I was losing frequently. Wow. And then I started doing, you know, when I was a junior, you know, sophomore, junior, I started to kind of get a little bit better, and you know, was it physical growth or? Well, it's, it's a combination of both. You know, I I started. I think when I, I started riding better is whenever I, I started actually as my job, I would break and exercise racehorses. With your dad? Well, we would go to the same place to work, but he would go to his job, I'd go to my job. So, But the last two years I was in high school, I would go, you know, I'd go to work every morning at, you know, be at work at 6 a.m., go ride six to eight horses. Breaking then, horses? More exercising is like a, Exercise rider, gallop boy, uh, breaking horses, yeah. So how many times a day do you get your ass handed to you? Um, every now and then. Not 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 too bad, but that's what I did. Seven days a week. Um every day. All day every I mean, and then I'd go to school at nine thirty and and that's when I started doing that and I started riding better and I mean I loved riding whenever I sucked and when I started to do better at it. Then I really liked it. And then I got a scholarship to go to college. Where? In uh, Alpine, Texas, in Sol Ross State. In Sol Ross State. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the first year I was there, we won the national championship, and they hadn't won that since. This and were like you early a big part 80s. Of that? Uh, I was. It, it was kind of funny because I was a freshman and I was a last minute add to the team, and there was a lot of 
guy, a handful of guys that didn't like that because there was a senior guy that they didn't use. In the cowboy world, man. But 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 at the end of the day, I stayed on. You know, I, I won the last round of. Uh, There's no politics the event in and, sports. Yeah, exactly. And so we won, and you know, I went to college. I was there for four and a half years. Started riding professionally, and did it until. You know, I did it professionally for 15 years. Till Dr. Freeman came and said, you know, if you have if you have an injury like the one you just had, which I had some di disc issues, which everybody thinks is from riding, but it's really genetics. You know, I, ha I had a very severe, still do, <laughs> case of stenosis, which is... Is that in the bottom part of your back? It's, it's just narrowing, narrowing of the, of the, of the, you know... Yeah, the spine. The spine, yeah. And so you're susceptible to disc issues. So and, if you'd have done that earlier on, a doctor would have told you not to ride at all. Well, the doctor that Maybe. operated on me the first time, he said, well, you, you shouldn't ride, but you should have never ridden anyway. But Is this the guy from the Southeast? No, this is the guy that was the ER guy, and, you know, he's a specialist in, you know, in Vegas. But the guy who who I talked to about it, you know, he was a, he's a sports guy. He understood this is what I do. and But he basically said, hey, if you have that same injury again, one level, up your Christopher Reeves or you're dead. Ah. And at that time, uh, my boys were um, four and Tr Trevor had just been born. And, and you're 35? 35. 35. And he said, uh, you know, that's the deal. And so I said, okay. So you were born I in 1960. Done. I was born, born in 63. 63. Mm -hmm. JFK died. Yes. So what do you mean when you keep every time you talk about the El Paso, you talk about being on the west side. What what was on the west side versus the east side? Well, it's just a part of town I grew up in. It was a uh, country club area. We weren't country club people. We could see the country club. We never got invited, but we really lived in the country club area. <laughs> so you lived in a good part of town. Yeah, great great part of town and. You know, the worst up, part of the good part of town. <laughs> grew up in a very normal, you know, had, you know, very, very normal. And, you know, I go, I still go back to El Paso once a year. You know, I have, I have an event that I produce out there and it's always fun. I, I, I love El Paso. So when you left uh, Sol Ross State, what year was that? That would have been 86, 85, mm -hmm. 85, 86. Yeah. And did you? And I so and I started. A degree? I started riding professionally. When I left, I was fourteen hours short. Or I was nine hours short of a degree. I was enrolled to graduate in the spring, and I applied for graduation, and I'd missed one class that was a requirement for my degree. Why'd and you miss? Were you rodeoing? No, because or you just being a d dick off? Well, no, I because I actually went to class when I was there. I you know I would. I would go, I would go to class and then on the weekends I would fly and, and go to rodeos and then I would come back. No, I always went to, I always went to class. Were you winning rodeos when you were in college? Like, were you? Yeah. The first year I made the national finals in, in 84 was the first year I qualified for the national finals. I would, it was my third year in, in college. So I would. So you're trying to juggle all that. I'm doing both. Yeah. <laughs> but, I I, but, I, but I, but I always went to school and I was, you know. So what made you want to go to school? Like, what made you feel an obligation to? Well, I, I had an opportunity yeah. I, that was offered a scholarship, and you know, if it hadn't been for me rodeo, and I probably wouldn't have had the means or resources to go to college. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always thought, you know, there's nothing. Still, I'm, I'm still a believer that there's nothing wrong with getting smarter and getting better, and not. I rode bulls for a living, so you can't you can't judge me by that. You know, you can't expect a lot of <laughs> intellectual, you know, conversation here. But you know, I always made good grades in school. And what was your degree? Or what, uh, was your it path? was uh, it was animal science. Yeah. Like was a you know, to be a rancher. like a like a business minor or just you know. Did you ever end up having to go back and or getting to go back and finish? Or? Well, I, actually, last year, whenever I went, I was. 
went back and enrolled to all I'd take was some online classes and uh this is like with in the last year or so and they're with all of the what's been going on mm -hmm. so the short story is no I haven't I'm not a graduate but uh I'm, I'm close you're but, closer yeah no I, I actually I can do it in one semester do you feel compelled to do it I, I feel compelled to do it because I was never one that if I was going to do something, I did it. Yeah. And it always kind of bothered me because I was always going to, you know, I, I left there because if I would have finished that semester, I would have, I would have been, I was only taking nine, nine hours. Mm -hmm. And if I'd have left, if I'd have completed that semester, I, I still would have lacked three. So I had the intention of going back the next fall. And that was when I, my career kind of really took off and, you know, no disrespect or no excuses, but what I was doing didn't have a lot to do with the degree. And I'm like, with the intention, I was always going to go back. And I just didn't, you know, well, my career took off that, and I got married. And It makes so just much sense it. for us to, like, if, we, if we're sitting here talking about a great basketball player who's got nine hours left, and he goes to the NBA, and you're like, of course you, duh. Because the money's there. That's... 15 million bucks guaranteed or whatever, but in rodeo, there was nothing guaranteed. There's nothing guaranteed. That's the one thing is they're not guaranteed. <laughs> that's the, that's like, the thing. That's why it's your sick. last hit doesn't guarantee you your next hit. Right. It doesn't. But for me, that's what I was doing. And that, that's what was my life. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to pull back because I knew where I wanted to go. And you saw the prize. Yeah. I didn't. You what know. was, what was the prize at the time? Was it just NFR? Was it just, no, it's been it's winning a world championship. That's what I mean, but there wasn't pro like when you win a world championship at that in that year. Well, is that a, is that a ton of money? Is that, like is it fuck you money or is it? Well, it's it's better than real job money. Yeah, that's what it is. And you know, you you never really do. You never ride bulls, quote for the money. You know, people talk about yeah. It it beats. A real job. Absolutely. It's on you. You know, the coolest thing about bull riding is and was, you know, always to me is that it didn't make it, it didn't make a damn who you were. It didn't make a damn who your parents were, what your last name was, what color you are. It's, it's up to you. You either ride you know, it. You, 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 you either make it or you don't. And so it's the purest thing ever, you know. If you win, it's your fault. And if you don't, it's your fault. If you suck, it's your fault. Yeah. You know, there are people that find excuses and whatever, but that's what I loved about it. It's like here I could go, you know, my, my success was always based on me. Yeah. You can say, well, you know, I drew a bad bull or I did this and, you know, but it's no different than you, you know? Yeah. Who you taught might, you that, man? Where's that drive come from? Um, just people I looked up to and, you know, were, were around, you know, if you're, you know, I, I guess I was so stubborn that I just, you know, I just, that's what I wanted, you know, but when I woke up every day for years, that's, that's what I thought about. I didn't think about, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about the world. I didn't know. I didn't pay attention to sports. You know, I grew up El Paso, you know, you know, they've got a, you know, they had a pretty successful basketball team usually, but UTEP, UTEP, um, first all black team, Don Haskins, you know, and I, you know, I knew a little bit about, but as far as, you know, I woke up, I wanted to be a bull rider. I want to be a cowboy. I didn't know shit about anything else. I remember, I remember meeting Larry Mahan, who's, you know, one of the, most famous, coolest cowboys in the history of the world, still is today. Mm -hmm. Just still, still a hero of mine. And we were, I was talking to him, and he said, "And I'd already won maybe a championship or two. And he said, "You know, there's just so much more to life than rodeo." And I never even that never even crossed my mind. There wasn't to me, right? Because that's what I lived all day, every day. All I did. Every day was get up and thinking about 
where I where I was going to go. I want to go get on the next bull and go just go win. Because winning, making the whistle and winning, to me that that just cured everything. Yeah, man. No matter no matter you know what was going on in the world, whether it's even you know had nothing to do with you or it was personal, you know, with with, with family or friends. If you win, you're get, the king. Get, going and winning, going and kicking ass, going and being ninety. That to me, that was. There's nothing like there. There, there still is nothing like it, and and I don't miss it. I don't miss it at all. I I just don't because I, I've always been a realist, and it's not going to happen. So I'm not going to sit around and make myself miserable saying, "Oh, I wish I was 20 years younger. I wish I was doing this." I don't. I love my life the way it is now. Mm -hmm. But. When I was doing that, bet your ass, I was all in every day. So what, and that, that how, was it. How do you practice? Like, okay, so if you're middle school, junior high, you're coming up, you know what you're going to do, you know what you want to do, just like a football player. But a, but a quarterback can call his buddy and then go run routes. And he, mm -hmm. can, he can, they can, you know, hone in. Are there places in El Paso or where you grew up where you could go every day? Not every day. And catch not, a ride? Not every day, but we would go. There was a place that we went uh, on, the, on the east side over in the Isleta area. There were some guys over that owned some bulls and could go over and you could go practice once a week, maybe maybe twice a week. Pay? Yeah, you pay like five bucks to, to ride a bull. Oh, wow. And so that's Did how you, you learn. Coach? Well, you have... you. You get, or was you it have, your you, friends going? Your, your buddies. Yeah. But, you know, I grew up with some guys that, you know, that had been to, you know, you go to a rodeo school, bull riding clinic, and they teach you, you know, the basics, the fundamentals. This this is what you do. This is how you do it. This is how you put your rope on. This is the equipment. This so is what you need to do. Let me ask you one thing real quick. So when you were at that school and you got on your first bull and you looked up with terrified eyes and you go, what do I do? Did they just go, clip? Close your knees and hold on tight. No, I, would, I, already, I, already, I, already, I already, already, knew what to do because I, I'd watched it for. I'm just making up. fun of you, man. I was like man. you, yeah, yeah. It's, I looked up at you like, really, man? Is that all you? Yeah, got? don't be. Yeah, yeah. Just put out effort. Don't let go, because that's how you start. That's that's how it starts. Get on. Don't let go. I mean, I sucked for a long time, and but I but I will say, unlike your case. A girl never kicked my ass the first time I did it. <laughs> Was it Suzanne Alexander that kicked I don't your know, ass? Man. Yes, yes, I do. Her <laughs> I name is know. Suzanne. I don't. We don't have to. Suzanne, <laughs> great television, smart girl, gorgeous, kicked Jack Ingram's ass on a bull. The first bull he got on. I had a tougher. It, it really luck a of the draw, wasn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, your, yeah. your your bull was just a monster. <laughs> it was like b better than bodacious. Yeah, better than anybody was it ever. A steer or what, what do you call? Yeah, him? you know he was a yeah he was the most feared animal known to man. And I re I'll never forget. St St you, you stared him down, but I thought you had him. But remember you didn't. he jumped in the thing. I was like, I felt like a real cowboy. I was like, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were trying to jump off. Say, hey, 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 hey. I was like, just shut up. I remember talking to Trip. Shut up, say, that's hey, okay. Man, do you know what you're doing? He's like, no. And then I found out he was like captain of his rodeo team. Well, you can't hold it against Trent. You know he's a chronic liar. He can't help it. I don't know, actually. He's a, he's a, no. He's a good dude. He's <laughs> he's he's a good dude. So when you were a junior senior at Solra State, where were you? Were you driving or flying or what were you doing? Uh, yeah. Well, mo most of, if if it was in Texas, I would drive, but I would usually drive to Midland and get on an airplane and. Go wherever. Was the money good enough? I need to to go do that. Yeah. Well, if it's good enough, if you win. And by by then, I was, you know, in eighty four, I would have been a junior in college, and you know, the first of the year, I won, uh, you know, one of the biggest winter rodeos. I, I won the Fort Worth, you know, stock show and rodeo. Mm -hmm. So, and is, is that uh, point is your name on the? They know you're coming. Well, they, no, yeah, well, nobody, that, that was really, that was my first year as a full time to get to end, that I'd already qualified to enter the big rodeos. And that was the first big rodeo I won. So, were any of your buddies from college traveling with you or were you going? Uh, alone? They, they, some of them, you know, 
initially some of them were, and then uh, a lot of the time I would go by myself so because they weren't at that caliber. They, they weren't. They weren't. Yeah, a lot of them. You know, early on they did, and you know, some some made it, and some, some did. didn't. Yeah, and you know, but none of them once once I got to the level that you know I, I was you know, in the, in the rankings of, you know, in the top 10, top 15, then while I was in school, I would, I would just go by myself. But now, know. could you feel that? Like, man, you know, when you were in college, cause I was in college making music, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's the same level or anything like that. No, no. It's, I'm just saying at some level, I was like, I can fucking, I can do this. No, you're, 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 you're realizing your, your dream and, and you look around and, you know, you, you probably had buddies playing with you when you were growing up and you look around and it's just you and, but you know where you want to go and Hey, you're, you're on your way. And not that they couldn't get it's, there. It's, 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 a, it's just like, it, to me, it was, a, it was a good feeling to be, be able to, to have, to not just have the opportunity to, but to be able to go and do it because, you know, it's on me, you know. I what was you, you, you learn how to you learn how to be. Uh, you learn how to, have to learn how to how to travel. How to you know you grow up quickly. Could you rent cars? Uh, you, you you could back then. You yeah. You have to be. I, I might have been one of the guys that they they changed the rule from eighteen to twenty five because I figured if I rent them, <laughs> they could have them when I when it was done. Most car in the world to rent. Yes, exactly. <laughs> When they got it back, you know, because I, you know, hey, it was a rental. So, did you have running buddies out there that were just older than you, or? Yeah, yeah, I, I did, but you know, once I got to the level that I was riding professionally, uh, there was there was a lot of guys out there that were kind of trying to do the same thing, but most of them were, you know, either, you know, more focused on, you know, had to focus on their school or whatever, just. I, it's shitty for me to say, oh, well, they just weren't good enough or that's not I, shitty. That's no, just it's just, you know, they just, you know, I was, this is what I, you knew what that, this is what I wanted. And so I was just going and, but it was cool because all, all, all of my friends, you know, that wanted to do the same thing, they were all good. They, you know, we, you know, they were, you know, they were, they, they were cool, but they were good. They but, but whenever we would go practice, they, even when I went to college, you know, when you go practice riding bulls, even you hear about people go practice. Well, say you go get on, if, if you know how to ride and you've ridden, you're, you're pretty good. You know, you go get on one, practice a little bit. Well, I would go get on four, five, six, seven, eight. I'd always get on usually more than anybody else. And they're like, why do you get on so many? I said, well, I'm not that good. I got to get, I want to get better. You want to be you the know? best? You know, well, I, I never really said that i just want to be better i want to be as good as i can be I, but when you were i don't you, i don't want to suck yeah and 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 i had no problem like when i you know you know if you have a bad set or whatever you oh your steel player just screwed up or you know you were nailing it but everybody you know you can make excuses all yeah. you want but usually it's bullshit it's it's on you yeah I've That's never been. I've, 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 always I've, I've never been afraid to look in the mirror and say, "Dude, you suck, and you've got to get better. You got to you got to try harder. You got to work harder." Yeah. You know. You know. Well, the only reason I'm ever at a gig is because my name's on the marquee. <laughs> yeah. And so exactly. if it sucks, man, there's yeah, only it, one guy that sucked. It, yeah. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's 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 the cool thing about it is it is the education, the personal education of yourself is that it's personal responsibility. So was Mayhan the number one guy when you were coming in? No, no, no. Or who was the number one guy when you were oh, junior, senior in college coming out? Donnie Gay, um, uh, Danny Flynn, Bobby Del Vecchio. Was he at guys those, like that. Were those guys at the events that you were rodeoing at? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And were you beating him? Uh, sometimes, yeah. And what'd they say? You know, most of them, <laughs> most, most, you know, most, most guys are pretty – you know, you, not where they pissed, but did, did they just? Did most they guys were pretty like, good. Here comes somebody. Yeah, I mean, most of them are good, but you know, a lot of times, you know, the older guys, 
I shouldn't say this, but they're like, no, I'm not even going to say Just it. Just say right? it. No, no. It's like. They write you off? No, no. It's like, they're like mean to the younger up and comers. And, you know, but they're, you know, a lot, a lot of them are cool. And because what it really boils down to, it's not so much about me against them. It's me against whatever bull right. I get on. And I happen to ride more bulls than they did than in the course of a but year. But you felt that thing. I mean, I felt it in my career. We've all felt it. If you've, if you've ever come up from underneath an existing hierarchy of successful people in your industry, you're going to get a few people that are like, Oh yeah, they look at you take like their lunch money. They, they look at you like, "What are you doing here?" And, <laughs> yeah. I'm, and you got to prove it to them. You're thinking you to yourself, "I'm here to kick your ass," <laughs> and that's what you're kind of there to do. Really. But you, you, as long, that's cool as long as you don't say it. Right. Because it's cool when you just do it. And but most of them are good. But you know, every now and then, if you know, you got to stand your ground, you did. But, so did you but, ever but have any? Of that. Did you ever have any experiences? Because Okay, I only met you when after 1995. I met you in 2099, something like that, 98, 97. So I only met you after you had every right to stand on the ground you were standing on. But when you were coming up in 80, 84, 85, 86, 87, well, I guess before 86, those first couple of years, did you ever have any incidences where, where one of those old guys – not, really stuck their heel in your face, or, or not? Not 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 really, but you know, you just most most of them were like really nice and respectful. Yeah. You know, every now and then there would be somebody or something, but but you know, you, well, as the, cocky as you are, like as and I love cocky is a good word. I like, never, you know, that's weird because I never even thought my. It's not man. It's, I just think of myself as. I'm, am I confident? I'm a, yes. I, I try to be a black and white, no bullshit guy. That's what I mean. So what I'm saying, but, you, know, I was, I, you know, I was, I was just the, prefacing that of like being black and white as I am with music, like you're either great or you're not. Right. And with bull riding, it's like, Hey man, that kid's either great or not. Right. So there's always an instance where like, did you ever have an instance where when you were on top of the world, where you kind of had, a, where you kind of looked at the kid and like, "Hey, man, back up," or were you always kind of just, "Hey, man, I am who I am." You, if you're gonna, be no, me, I don't. Be yeah, me. I'm just always me. I, the, the, to me, it's it's easy. You know, the numbers don't lie. You either, you either you either wrote him or you didn't, and you can talk all the shit you want, but it is what it is. The, Reinforced what I've always believed. All I knew is if I made the whistle, that's that's all I could do, and that's all that really mattered. Right. I I, I never worried about talking, but I the, the funny thing about it is, I never envisioned. I, again, I look in the mirror and I said, "Dude, you'll never be good enough to ride as good as those guys." Who you'll, are those guys? The world champions, Donnie Gay. You know, Denny Flynn, Larry Mahan, you know, Charlie Sampson, you know, guys that were, I'm like, fuck, I just, I just want to be able to go and ride. And I want to be in that, that group, but I never thought, I just never thought that I would be good enough to ever do that. I just, when did like, you finally feel like you did? Um, when I did, when, what was that? Was it well, after whenever you were done or why? No, you just it? whenever I'm, you know, the first time I made the NFR or 84, that would have been 84. First time I made the NFR and, you know, you know, that year, you know, I'd rode, I rode some bulls that none of those guys had ridden or, you know, I, so in that I, world, I, 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 rode, I rode two bulls in the period of like three or four days that were world champion bulls that were like voted the year before and the year before that the world champion bucking bull the, like the best bull in all of rodeo I, I rode one on a sunday afternoon and i rode another one on a tuesday one in san jose california and then two days later in waco and 
mind you, both of those bulls were world champion bulls a year previous and two years previous, meaning they probably weren't at their, their prime, but <laughs> so I, was about to ask. I still <laughs> kicked their ass, you know, and they were world champion bucking bulls, you know. And so, so are, they, are they pretty consistent? Throughout a throughout a, a, a given year, when a, when somebody's a world when a when a bull is a world champion bull, well, they're they're voted by by the top guys. after event. Yeah, are they is their performance fairly consistent? It's always yeah. Is um, is George Strait fairly consistent? Yeah, of so course he is. They're just athletes. When when you're the badass of the badasses, you always show up. You don't take nights off. Right. So if yeah, if you're the world champion. You know, very few things that if you're the world champ, you don't take nights off. You don't take days off. You're that day when it's stormy. This might be when a it's silly snowing, question. When it's raining. It's a silly. I know it's silly, but they know where they are. Those bulls, they know what the, they know. The lights are on. They know that. Yeah, I don't know what they know, but all I know is the ones that the, the great ones. They always perform, no matter what, no matter if it's night or day no matter whether it's raining no matter if the sun's shining no matter if it, the you're gonna the, get the, your the, best whether the whether you know the ground isn't you know you know isn't the best where sometimes it rains sometimes you know whatever you know they're like people they the great ones always they always show up yeah they, they don't ever well you know it, it they don't have a list of excuses they show up. So, they, yeah, it's, they're, they're no different. So I don't know. You know, the, it's just very unnatural to have somebody on their back and they want to get you off and some of them just are better at it. And, yeah, their goals know. get you off. Your goals just stay on. That's the same way it is. Night. Yeah, same stuff, yeah. So when did you start finding your real running crew, like like Lane and, and the guys that you really – Well, the, you know, I grew up with a guy, a guy named Cody Lambert and, uh, you know, he – he was not that much older than I was, but, you know, I, I worked for his father. His father's a real successful horse trainer, and his little brother is still one of my best friends today. His name's Casey. He, he was a real successful jockey and trainer now, but he rode bulls as well. And But Cody made the national finals, you know, when I was, you know, still in high school. You know, he, he made it when he was like eight. eight. Yeah like 82 or yeah, I think it was 82, 83 in the saddle bronc riding. So he was, he, he, he was much more advanced, but I grew up around him. And, uh, so he, when he made the NFR, it was like, Oh, it was cool. Like, well, maybe I could, but probably not. And so, but so one, you're a freshman in high school, freshman in college. Yeah. And, and so whenever, so whenever, you know, the first year I made the NFR, not I'd, I'd met Lane Frost the year before, like in high school. Where was he from? He was uh, he was from Utah, but he moved to Oklahoma in high school, and so we got to be kind of friends. We went to a few rodeos in '84 and starting in '85. Was he, he and I at started your level or what's that? Was he his, like when you met him? Were you like, oh, you want the same shit I want? Oh yeah, but he was already there. Oh, he was. Oh yeah, he was already badass. He. He could, yeah, he, he won, uh, you know, he, first time I met him, we were in Washington State in Yakima, Washington. And I think we were, we were both in junior high school. We both made the championship round. I got slammed, hung up, black eyed, whatever. And he, I think he, he ended up, in the top five or something. And then the next year I, I saw him again, but he was just so much more mature as a, as a rider and, and, and a person for, for that matter. You know, he could and ride. The guys that are winning those events are 25, 24. No, this is when we're in high school. So it's a high school event. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, high school finals. And so when I got, he ended up winning the national high school championship, like, of the whole country and I ended up winning second. And like when I first met him, like I wanted to like not like him because of course he was everything that I wanted. Yeah, you know, he's a pretty boy and he's a talented, you know, he he, he could ride better than I I 
Get tired I could. better than you. you could get and he was, better and he was cooler than me. <laughs> and, and he was everything that I wanted to be, but I wasn't. And so, Son of a bitch. No, yeah, you're better. So initially, I'm like, I don't like you because I'm a little, you know, I'm a little insecure bitch, you know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not as, I'm not as good as you are. <laughs> You're pretty, and I'm ugly, and you win, and I'm and I don't. And, but he was such Let a good guess guy. He was charming too. Oh fuck! And he, he won you over. <laughs> you had to, you had to like him. You could not not like him. And so I we got to be buddies, and then you know the following year, I went to college, and he and he took off and started writing professionally. Well, he ended up they take fifteen the top fifteen uh, in points, and which is money won to the national finals, and. The year I went to college and he went started writing professionally, he was 16th. So he didn't make it. So the following year, 84, saw him a few more. You know, I'd run into him and then we got to be friends. We went to a few rodeos. And then the following year, 1985, while I was still in college, but uh, you had already we, made start, the finals. We, we started traveling together. We both made the finals the same year. In 84. 84, yeah. So and, did you ever ask him... Because you went to college. Mm -hmm. Was that a plan B or was that just because you had the opportunity to? Because I had the opportunity to, and I didn't have the, you know, I I couldn't have just took off writing professionally because. You didn't think you were that good. Well, it wasn't as much as I probably, yeah. Not good I, I didn't think I was that good. You're right. But I also didn't have the resources to, to go. So did he? Not really, but but he was already winning more than I was. Did you ever ask him like, "Hey, man, what what gave you the confidence just to fucking go?" No, I would never. Well, I I wanted to ask him why he didn't go to college, but I knew because because he he didn't have to. Well, he didn't he didn't want to, and he he never liked school. But right, you know, he was dyslexic. Right, so he always struggled in school. He hated school, but they didn't know that forever. Cause he was, yeah, that was we were just years get, away from understanding dyslexia. Yeah, that, that, that was, yeah, that was the fucking age, you know. We, <laughs> we gave a shit we, about we, dumbasses. We, who can't we can't, read. we can't diagnose something yeah. so complicated. You just can't read it. We just can't complicate it. So you're just a dumb motherfucker, yeah. you know. It's like, it's. I had friends like that, you know. <laughs> they were all badass athletes because they had to be. Yeah, well, we hit sign autographs and he couldn't spell Bob. If you spot him, the B and the O. And so he had always him the PO, <laughs> we can't spell Bob. He would scribble his name and he scribbled it all because he, he just couldn't. And it's because, yeah, he he had charmed his way through school and the last thing he wanted to do was go to school. Is he a good looking motherfucker? Well No, no, no he wasn't good looking, he was pretty. He was fuck he was a pretty boy. Yeah. Oh, and everybody like loved Saxton. him. Yeah, just pretty. Like walk in pretty. I mean like, I used to always say, Yeah, you're not you're not that cool and you're not that pretty, but <laughs> I know I was lying because everybody thought he was. That. <laughs> and so we were pretty opposite, but we got to be best friends. And Did y'all travel together? Yeah. That, that, Room we, together? We started doing everything together, like starting in, in 85. We, did, we went everywhere together, did everything together, traveled together. Did you, you know, bring he, him he Scott and Bond together? He had gotten married, and, ah. and then you know I got got married. So we, you know, we went, yeah, from eighty five until eighty nine when when he when he passed away in Cheyenne. You know, we were we were pretty much we did everything together. We all we all's dreams kind of tied together. together. Yeah, you know he, uh, you know I I actually. I used to give him shit because I'd never beaten him. He beat me in high school. He beat, you know, here, there. Even like the first time we made the NFR, I go into the NFR in fourth place in in overall fourth in the world. And I ride like seven out of ten, which is pretty good for a first time. And, you know, he rode like five, but but he won more money. He ended up beating me in the standings for the year. And I, I didn't even realize it till like about a month later. And I saw him, I said, motherfucker, no matter what, I don't care if I win last this year or next to last this year, but 
as long as you win last. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> you win I'm, last. I, I'm going to beat you. You know, I, I can win next last as long as you win last because I'm going to beat you because I've never beaten him ever. So how does that work? And for, so for then a I guy won- doesn't really know what he's talking about. So you can you can. If you ride five bulls and you get 92, 94, 93. It's all, it's all, it's all on how much it, it's all on how much money you win. Because you win you win money for individual rides and then you win money over the So you can go in and ride five. You can you can go in as fourth place, he's in fifth place. You ride seven bulls, he rides five, but the money But he still- but he won more because he placed in individual rounds gotcha. more than I did. Gotcha. And so that's kind of it was, it was a friendly rivalry. So what happened the next year? Uh, then. Did you beat him? I, I beat him. And then the following, well, the the following year I would go in and I've got the biggest lead. I got a huge lead. And I lose the last day to Ted News. He's a guy from California. and But I still beat him. But it was still the biggest choke job maybe. In, you still won. Well, I, I beat him. I didn't. I ended up second for the year. Oh, you lost to Ted. Yeah. But you beat Lane. I beat Lane, but I would rather small have. victories. Yes, very small. <laughs> what do you mean by choking? It was. How'd it, choke it was. It? A, How'd you choke? What, what, what does that feel like for you? Well, it was a realization that you just sucked. Like, but you weren't. So, it, it's like you it's, were it, it's, it's, it's like it's like you were. Um, you're at the Masters and you, you're four strokes up at sixteen, and you get beat. So you, something kind of like that. Were, yeah. were you tight? Uh, yeah. Like, do you remember hindsight, being tight and being like? Well, I, I thought I was. I thought I, I. I didn't think there was any way I could lose. But also, I was young, and you know, I was. What year was this? This was eighty five. Okay. And so I'd, I'd, I'd been in the lead since January and like, I had like a. And then FR is in. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a year spring, season. Spring. It's a year season. It goes January or whatever. It goes November to the following December. Okay. But I, I had, uh, I was in the lead all year long and even half after the first half of the NFR, you know, I, I had like a $35,000 lead and I was you know lead overall for the week. And then. I get bucked off three out of five, which never happened, but it came down the last day and I just got slammed and you got tight. Yeah, I just sucked. I just choked. Yeah. It's always it was a huge choke job. <laughs> That's funny you say that. So and, have you ever like whenever you used to watch uh, cause about that same time, eighty six, eighty seven, eight, I'm not sure I'm sure you weren't at the time, but like into golf, which I know you're into now. Mm-hmm. But like back then Funny you mentioned the Masters. Like Norman walked into the last round of the '86 or '88 Masters, whatever the one. Maybe it was the one that Nicholas won, even. But eight, six or eight shots up and lost. Yeah, that, that have was you me. ever had I, a chance I did that. to talk to guys like that? And go, ne- I never and go, have, hey, man. I, I never have. But 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 in hindsight, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because the next year you came in and killed it. Yeah, I annihilated him next year, and so. I came and I won the next year. So in '86, you were up by what going to the NFR? Uh, probably bigger, and then and then you just yeah, hammered and it then, like then, Tiger then, Woods. Then, then I finished, yeah. And then '87, like he he was a champion. You know, he won the. The cool thing was there, and then there oh, was a guy that, that that joined us. His name was Jim Sharp, mm-hmm. who I still say is better than anybody. He won a couple championships, but he traveled with us. So why it's such an individual sport. We had a group of, it was like me, Jim, Lane, and a guy named Clint Bronger. Mm-hmm. Was and Clint ever we, in the elite class? And, and, and like, like we always, we always, no matter where we go, like when we showed up, we were very confident that, that one or all of us were going to win. And we did. Like I won it in 86, uh, Lane won it in 87. Jim won in 88, I won at 89, Jim won at 90, and I won at 91. And then 89 was the year that Lane passed away. Clint? But Clint never won it. But he was he was as good as we were. Just a luck of the draw. He just never like 
he 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 lost it like got right eight seconds, like seven seconds, you know, at least once and maybe even even twice. He never could he never could he could put it together all year. He just never did well. He just never did well in Vegas. That thing. Yeah, it's like Do you ever talk to him about it? Um, not, ever, not, not really, but it, it, yeah, it was is it too painful it, for it, him or is it, or is it just, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was a hard deal. I mean, we all know people like that. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. There are times, like you said, knowing yeah. when you choke something, yeah, it's, it's hard to revisit. Yeah. He just never, <laughs> like he, he would just kick ass all Does year. Does he live and, with it now? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't think, you know, I don't know it, but it, it, yeah, it affected him. You still in touch with him? Yeah. Not as much, you know. He's he's come down and live with me during the winter, and I'm not as close to him as I used to be. But great guy, and uh, but yeah, you know. candidly though, and I can edit out any of this you ever want. But like when you used to talk to him about it, did you know like, um, like there are people you know that I, I never really said it, but but did you know? Well, did you know when, when you when you get when you get there you. You still have to breathe. Yeah. You have to. Well, the, the hardest thing is performing at the highest level when it means the most. And that's that's the most important thing. And that's what you're judged on. It's true. It, ju it just is. And it's 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 not fair, but nobody gives a shit. It is fair. The, fa the, the fair <laughs> is, as Randy Galloway says, it's, it's in Dallas. It's in September. It's a state fair. That's the only fair in the world. That's right. But you have to be able. And, you know, I, I won four world titles. I could have won eight because I was, I had a chance to win eight. Right. But, but I could have won fucking none. I could have won years none. Of 94, but 90, you, or because, 84, because 95. Every, 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 every year it comes, every year because the amount of money that was in Vegas, you know, it came down to one one time because if you win that day and you win overall, it's a fifty thousand. You know, at that time it was a fifty thousand dollars swing. What is it now? It two or three times more than that. You know, hopefully, you know, yeah. it's, it's supposed to be. But it really, you you had never did I go in there like, oh yeah, I've got it won and I don't have to do it. Like every time that I won a championship, you know. With the exception of uh, the PBR championship, whenever Bodacious cracked me in the face, what year was that? I had? I had that was ninety five. I okay. had that one, but I didn't know that. The only reason I won is because the other guy who had a chance to beat me, you know, he he got bucked off. But every, all the other chances. So the year that I was going to start off with that whole thing, not I didn't want to just jump to that because that is a big part, but like. So basically what you're saying is from 84 to 95, you won four. 84 to 90 to 92, I won four, yeah. But you're saying you could have won. I could have won. Eight, all of them. I could, no, I could have won. I should have won 85. I could have won 87. I could have won 88. Yeah, I could have won four more based on, yeah. Based on one, and the, one and the, day. In the mind frame of an athlete like you, that's the funny part is that yeah. when I'm sitting here talking to you about four world championships, you're telling me about four lost world championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won four, but I could have won eight, but I could have won none. <laughs> yeah. Because it was, you know. It's, it's that thing. And, and that's, again, that's doing it whenever it means, whenever it means everything. You can be the champ or the chump in the blink of an eye. Absolutely. And I've been both. <laughs> Being the champ is funner. <laughs> a lot more fun. But when you go back and look at it, is it razor thin or did you know, did you just know you were just better? Or was, or no, was it razor it's just, thin? The, the difference between first and it was, and it was, was uh, I think it was pretty, it, it was razor thin. Yeah. Was it just mental, you know, in golf, they say it was just, it's just who wants it. The, like who just has, is it in, is it, it just who wanted to hold on longer? I think that everyone wanted to hold on longer. It's just some people can, some people can't. But but for me, it, 
It meant everything, you know. You you were willing, well, obviously. It it just meant everything, you know. In your mind, did you have delusions of glory or the same way? Hold on, and I, I preface this with like, I've driven through the night at gigs, and I've thought this is my own stuff. And it's not bull riding, trust me, I, I know that. But it's like, if this all goes down in flames. I better be while I'm on stage. Like, were you, were you that like, Hey man, if I die on a bull, that's, then that's what I was here for. That was my life. Yeah. That's why you have to, you know, if you ride bulls for a living, you have to look at it as you just really have to genuinely bullshit yourself and say, it's not that bad, you know? And then you really, you have to really say, you know what? If I die today and if I die, die doing this, then I'm going to die one of these days. And so if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. But I was willing to do that, and I accept that. And then once I started doing it, I never thought about that again. How, how scary and how bad it was because you can't be good at it unless you're focused on what you have to do to make a great ride. And that's just being focused, coming with – every ounce of energy you have to make the whistle, to stay on for eight seconds. It has nothing to do with anybody else, anything else, the amount of money, the championship, any of that. It's on you. You, you. It's up to you to do that. And when you can do that and you know not, not very many people can do that, it's just a very... It's a good feeling just to, you know, the, when I won the world, like, I wasn't just, like, overly giddy and, like, well, I, that, that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I expected and that's what I wanted. And was I happy and excited? Yes, I, of course I was, but I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. Like, when I lost, like, I was the most horrible loser ever, like, when you got off the bull, I would be the, so disgusted. I would, I would like throw things and Did you kick know you things. lost after your ride, even if somebody else had to go after you? Did you know you'd already lost it? Even well, if you rode the bull and got a, a score. No, well, the, every time I lost, I, I got. You got yeah, bucked off. Yeah. Yeah. And I knew, and I never took it well. I was a great winner. I was a poor loser. Yeah. I would throw things and kick things and throw a tantrum like a toddler. <laughs> they would, you know, I'm. Because Sweet, lo- losing man. to me is like, I would just, yeah. But, it, but I always knew like, the, the reason I hated it and was so angry is because I knew it was always my fault. Mm-hmm. Could you pinpoint in the ride where you fucked up? Um, well, or where the bull got it's you, just, like, it's just instant, you know, it's just bam, but yeah. Is it like a car accident? It's, it's, really- it's, it's just, it's just, yeah, you, you know what? No, but it, it's so, it's so quickly, but as soon as you get drilled, you know, you suck. But do you know you're out of, you're out of position? Not, right not necessarily. Well, happens? sometimes, but usually, you, usually, you know, but you know, sometimes you, you're hanging on, you think that you're going to get it out, but yeah, but at the end of the day, you know, when you, when you hit the ground, you know, you suck. And when you know you suck, that's a bad feeling. Yeah. Like I would, I just wasn't good at it. Like I was such a good winner. <laughs> you were when gracious. It, when, when it came to, oh, yes. I want to thank <laughs> all the people. And, what if they were yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but when I lost, just best thing was just. Well, the I good just, thing I, is when you lose, I just you're not need, on camera. I just had to go spend time alone. Just. So tell me I this, just, man. I just had to like go, you know what? So when it's a when it's a good show for me and and there's people and it's packed and it's supposed to happen and you get, and you and you find yourself think of think of a show a 90 minute show as an 8 second ride for me. Mm-hmm. And at some point about quarter halfway through you go, "I'm in. I'm inside of it." Like I know exactly what to do. I know where the people are. I know who's missing. I'm going to get them in a second. 
Like it's all so clear and so slow. You just know. Is that the same? What, what's it like when you're on a bull and you get inside the middle of that zone where you you know instinctively what's going to happen next and then it does? Well, you know, by the time you get to the level that you have to be at to to be competitive as a as a world champion, you know, you somehow or another you're you're able to kind of slow everything. It's eight seconds, and it's not very long, but you're aware of what's going on, and That's so eight seconds. and so yeah, and so you're aware of what's going on. But it takes so long for you to develop that. I know, but once you get but, there, but once you can get you there, explain that feeling because not because anybody that's well, watching it's this, because you know, you know, once you once you get there, it's pretty cool because you're aware, and just like you you make and do very that? subtle like, things that, that that makes you have you know. It makes you have the ability to do shit nobody else, you know, the other guys can't do. I guess, but 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 but, but, but beyond that, that you, you do you feel you, weightless? You, you just you have to like have the ability to do the shit that nobody, most of the other guys. The one thing that I was, I just, I would never give up. Like, okay, I could, I'm in bad position. If I, if I hang on a longer, there's a very good chance I'm going to get my fucking teeth knocked out. Is that where most people and, let go? And you say, you know what? I'll wait for another day. I'd say, knock my fucking teeth out. I'll get some more. <laughs> just, you, you just That's don't give the up. Thing. You just don't give up. And that that was probably the the what I would. Is that the difference uh, between riding seven bulls what, and what, riding what, five? What, what, what I would say, the, the difference between me and a lot of guys who were better than me is that I just think it was more important to me. And I, you know, people, some would give up before I would, I would just, I would never give up. Like I would, I would never, ever, like I couldn't live with myself. If I knew that, that I gave up. I, I just couldn't do it. That's funny, man. Like, yeah, I, 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 I just couldn't because there, there's so many guys that I look back and like, they, they were, they were so much better than I was. Just and, naturally more. Well, they, yeah, they were just better. Was it, is it rhythm? Is it just? It's a, it's a combination of you know athletic ability and you know size. It's it, it's reaction and you know, but when you were at the top of your game at thir at thirty or twenty eight, twenty five, whatever, how tall are you? I'm five eleven and a half. So you're big for a bull rider. Well, you're yeah, tall. Well, yeah. Were you heavier too? Nah. Yeah, I was a little heavier. Yeah. Because most of those guys are like most of them. Are they they can be gymnasts. It's, well, it's <laughs> it's like in a lot of sports, you know. You there's a, there's a prototype of a linebacker, of a running back, of a wide out, of a defensive when back. You were coming you know? up to people tell you you were too tall. You were too. Thin. When I suck, yeah. What, but when you, yeah, suck. when Winning I suck, yeah, you're just too shit. tall. Yeah, you're too tall. But you know, there, there's been one or two guys that have been taller than me that won some championships. Owen Washburn, you know, he was a little taller than me. Adrian Morales, Brazilian guy, he was a badass. He, you know, he's he's price six foot, but you're not gonna see, you know, just what's the prototype? Five nine, probably nine, 60, yeah, 50. you know, they got a lower center of gravity, and but you know. It's a good excuse if you're no good. If you want it, you hold on. <laughs> you just don't let go. That's a trip. <laughs> just don't let go. It's that it's that simple, but you have to figure out a way fundamentally to to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is, am I just imagining what I'm trying to get at is is that moment when you're inside the eye of the hurricane? Like it, is that a is that a cliche that I'm making up or is it something that is it that, that feel where you feel it's weightless? A, it's it's a, it's a, it's a kind of it's kind of weird. It's it's kind of a what however you want to explain. Everybody explains it. Everybody explains it differently and feels it differently. But it's you know you, when you when you're kind of in the zone, it, it's just a feeling of like whenever I was riding, you know, at my best, and 
I got to you get to where you're able to focus all your effort and energy and just doing what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But it just, it's like you're floating. It's like, you're, it just, it, 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 it. Is it almost it, like you're looking at it from it, above? It beca- yeah. <laughs> it, it beca- well, it just becomes, you, you have clarity and it, it just becomes easy. You know, do you ever but, you ever have dreams but, about that? No, not not really. But but I know as I got older, you know, it became harder again. Yeah. It was like when I was younger, it became harder because even when I was competitive at thirty five, I was still winning, but it was a struggle because I just couldn't react and do. It, it just became harder. I was still competitive. I was still winning, and I still loved it. But um, how old but, were you the last championship you won? Oh, the last championship I would have been probably thirty-two. And so at 35, 30, 30, 32, riding bulls is like being thirty-two, starting. As a running back in the NFL. Yeah, playing football. Yeah, Adrian it's, Peterson at 32. It's, 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 it's just, no, nobody does that. Right. But, you know, I never I never got tired of it. You know, usually riding bulls at that level, you, you, you know, physically, you just get, you, you get beat up to where it's no fun or mentally, like, to get up. It's like, if you go play, I don't know how many shows you play. Like when you first start, you can go play every night yeah. for for five years. The older you get, the more you can still go. You still love it, and you can get up to go do twenty, but you can't. You don't want to do a hundred. Yeah, it's there's it's two but, different but, things. But, One's but, physical, but, but but for me, I just never you know I never got tired of it. Okay, let me ask you this: When you when you decided to to hang it up at thirty five, you were still winning some. Oh, I was still I was number one in the standings in the so PBR in. in the PRCA in the first of March. Did you quit before the year was up? Yes, because I had to have neck surgery, and he said, "You have that. Uh, if so you, you have that to. injury again, well, I didn't have to." He said, "If you have that injury again, you're either dead or Chris Reeves." And I said, "Okay." Anyway, Fair enough, that, I'm done. Superman an option there? <laughs> I just said, hey, you know what? That's okay. But I was already thinking, like, you know, I was already ready to, like, I was hoping in my own mind, I never say anything to anybody, but, like, I would do that year and then I wanted to be done because I just knew. You just knew it was. I just knew I wasn't as good, but I was still winning. You know, I, okay. When you say you weren't as good, I, I, I was. I was still playing. I was still playing the big gigs, but yeah. But but again, you still. It wasn't like they, they give you shit. You still have to show up. and You still have to. That's what I'm saying. You still have so to deliver. Level, the, the, when, the one thing about it, it's not a political. Bull riding is not a political thing, right? You can either ride or you don't. You know, you're not on stage because you know the owner or your your agent's better than the dude behind you who's better. That's right. That's why I loved about it because. Wasn't like, oh yeah, they're giving. You, they don't give you shit riding bulls. Was there people? Some point- people will say and think that, oh well, he gets a higher score because he's this or that. Okay, it's not. It's reputation. not. It's, it's not really one rider one day. It's like, it's every day. It's a. It's it's a season. It's a. It's a year. I never thought it's about a, that. It's a so weekend. There are judges. Oh yeah, it's very subjective. But they know what they're doing. Well, they do and they don't. You know, they're like judges of anything. Yeah, you can agree with them or not agree with them. But over the course of four but over, days, but or over, but over, days but, or, but over a week or or a year, the best guys always win, no matter who they are, what color they are, where they're from, you know, whether you like them, whether you don't. The best guys, the best guys win. Was there some point in, in your last year or two where you know the difference between championships and not is, you, in your own words, like? Holding, I I had to hold. I had to. The the world, the Lord, the the stars, whatever it was, 
I was going to hang on because I, I don't care about my teeth. I care about hanging on. Was there a time after you achieved the kind of success that you had where you were kind of like, was that the deciding factor where you go, you know what, man, I already cracked my face once, man. I'm like, I don't want to do, I don't want to go through that shit again. Now, that's the kind of shit that never bothered me. But what bothered me is that I just wasn't as good, but. You just weren't physically as reactive. Yeah. Like yeah. twitch muscles weren't. Just wasn't as good. And, um, and it wasn't because of, of lack of effort, but. You know, when you have a setback, I could come back and still bring it. I could still come back and win. But, you know, I, I was aware enough to know that wasn't going to be long term. I knew I'm very objective and very real with myself. But I thought I could gut it out another year, but I didn't. So I'm assuming, though, that when you wrote your last school, you didn't know it was going to be your last school. I did not know. Did that Oh, you no. didn't know? No, no, no. Because I hit the ground and, you know, I, I could feel kind of a jolt in my neck and I I was slow getting up. And by the time I got up, I knew because I had something similar and I, and I blew out another disc. And once I did an MRI and I said, hey, you know. That's how, that's how I knew when I was at your event. I landed on the ground. Yeah. And I knew it was my last. Yeah, I knew your last one. <laughs> I didn't know. No, I thought I would. I thought I would probably be okay. And then when I went and after the MRI, that's when I knew. But I didn't know that day. You talk very easy. About but that. but but that but it, but it did me a favor because you know that it was that time because you know I was years old. I was done. I just didn't want to admit it. Yeah. But I was still winning. You know. Well, it's hard to leave when you're still winning, man. It's 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 a tough deal. Everybody wants to John Elway win the Super Bowl and and walk, right in but the sunset. You can look at all the great football players, all the great people in any sport. If you still feel like you can do it, and it's still showing up in the standings that you are doing it, that's it's hard. Like if I'd have been Elway and I won the Super Bowl, I said I'll go win another one. Yeah. I'm I'm a fan of anyone. I don't care what you do or what you don't do. I'm a fan of successful people because it's hard to be successful. So, hey man, in '89, you're you're how old were you? In '89, I would have been uh, probably. I was born in '63. Do you, how how good are you at arithmetic? Yeah, you're primed <laughs> out, rocking. You guys are all traveling together. Mm -hmm. Having a ball, winning. Mm -hmm. If you're not winning, your best friend's winning. Your yeah, we're like the Globetrotters. We show up, nothing but winning. <laughs> Everybody else was the Washington Generals. <laughs> yeah, they were the Generals, yeah. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say it, but, you know, yeah, it was fun because the guys that we were with, I mean. That, that was a 52 weeks a year. What was? Yeah, well, it's, it goes year round. It's 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 like 40-something 40, 40 weeks a year? We, we yeah, it was the winter was fairly busy and then the spring was somewhat light and, you know, from the first of June till first September was pretty hot and heavy and pretty light in the fall and then the national finals. Yeah. Now there's a, there's the big rodeos. Was Houston a big rodeo? Biggest one, biggest one of the winter. Yeah. And Cheyenne and all biggest one of the summer. And so what were the ones in between? Was that like, Sometimes you're playing a stadium. Those are the big ones, and then the other ones, were right? Very yeah, small. Sometimes, sometimes you're playing. Sometimes you're playing stadiums. Sometimes, hey, you're, hey, so, right, sometimes up. you're playing a club. Sometimes you're playing a right. festival. Sometimes you're, you know, it just kind of varies. And when I bring up those names of those big radios, do you, do you remember the, like, you were an athlete, so I'm thinking about it in terms of a fan, just going. And now, like, crowd going crazy and you're walking in, you get introduced. Like, where was your head at when that kind of shit was going on? When they were introducing you and the crowd knows this is one of the best, this is the best, where you're like, oh, fuck yeah, game on, here we go. Well, yeah, I mean, th that's like, you know, we, we, we used to, you know, when we started, we, we, we went to rodeos, all the big rodeos, Houston, Cheyenne, Calgary. You know, all of them. And then when we, you know, whenever we created, 
which I'd say we, because I was president and founder of the PBR. While you, you know, were still in it. Yeah, while I was still riding. And so, you know, we we created it, you know, from a sports standpoint, you know, and, you know, rodeo is just, you know, it had always been presented kind of in a different way. It's kind of like a track and field event. You know, you got different events, you got. Right, right, right. And it's all different. But, you know, when we started putting on standalone bull riding events, it was a sport. And, yeah, we, we did a lot of what other sports do in terms of presentation of, you know, with music and pyro and you know the action of the actual sport and mm -hmm. uh yeah it, it it was it was pretty fun and pretty cool because you know that's that's kind of what it what evolved you to. that in uh well the year that that i had the neck injury mm -hmm. and i i sat out all of 94 but we started it in uh 90 92 was it immediate no but 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 it took off pretty quick mm-hmm mm -hmm. You know, how did you, how, when did you have a falling out with those guys? Uh, whenever. Was it? When it, well, well, it was founded by riders and owned by riders. And, um, you know, as, as we got older, you know, people start having different ideas of, you know, how it should be done because, you know, when they're not be like, all artists running mm -hmm. the company and then when they get younger better artists than them and they get pushed out and you know they have different beliefs and how these guys are you know whenever you know, we, we 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 created it we try to be fair to everybody but oh, that's that's a mistake that's a that's a that's a, a that was a jungle <laughs> that's always a mistake <laughs> and well the, the the bottom line was you know we just had very different ideas and i i don't i don't like arguing and fighting and right so funny you say that you fight bulls your whole life but you don't like arguing and fighting well it's a different deal i know but you know it, it, again back to back to bull riding you know black and white you ride or you don't yeah life business it's not black and white it's gray yeah and i'm a pretty black and white guy you know, to, you're right or you're wrong. And this is why. Yeah. But, you know, whenever you start expecting somebody to do something that you wouldn't do, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Or taking advantage of somebody because you can, because you want, you want the dollar because you just want it, not because you deserve it. So, so it I, came down to philosophical differences of, of how. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you enter uh, a dollar bill into a conversation, that's when you realize if y'all are friends or not. Yeah. It just does. Hey, man, let's take a little break. This is badass, dude. You're. I really enjoy talking with you. I, I have nothing to add. You, 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 you're looking for somebody getting me. You said, fucking, let's look in the barrel. No, wait, wait, there's somebody. Oh, man. <laughs>